Good afternoon, Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 17th, 2016. Real quick, want to look in the eastern Pacific where we do have an area of disturbed weather that's going to try to develop a little bit over the next few days, well off the coast of Mexico, so even if it does go, no problems there for the Mexican coastline in the Pacific, but I did want to at least shed some light on this and not ignore that region. The bigger story, and even though it's not that big, we do have something to track out here, tropical depression number six. A couple of things to point out. First of all, lots of dry mid-level air around it, and you can tell even on this infrared non-colorized or non-enhanced view. In other words, we're not assigning any colors in the satellite scheme here. It's just black and white. And you can tell even through this, there's a lot of dry air sitting in here. Mid-level humidity is not very high. And that's part of that Saharan air layer that has come off and been pretty prevalent for most of July and now into August. And as such, you can see the convection waxing and waning with this system. It may make it to tropical storm strength, but beyond that, it's going to really have some struggles ahead. The official forecast track, uh, this is our map actually from HurricaneTrack.com plotting the official National Hurricane Center plot points. Out to five days, you can generally see... Uh, an angle off to the northwest. It was a lot more of a steep angle like this recently in the model runs especially. And I think this will continue to bend more to the west with time since this system is probably going to stay a little weaker and a little shallower in the atmosphere driven more by the low and mid-level flow rather than the deep layer flow if it was a large and thick in the atmosphere storm or hurricane so to speak. Uh, it does have a very vigorous vorticity signature right there in the middle of this area here. You can tell it's nice and round. So a lot of energy with the system. The wind shear, fairly favorable through here. Green uh, means go and red means stop for the most part in the tropics. And you can see there are some southwesterly winds cutting across. So if this system runs into that, hey, it looks like a pair of scissors there, right? And you get the idea that it would shear it. One thing that is in favor for the most part is water temperatures yeah, marginal through here, 80, 81 degrees or so. If this was headed more on a westerly course towards the Caribbean, which it's not, but if it was, it would obviously be running into higher ocean heat content values as it stands. If it tracks like this, as the forecasts are showing, it'll get into gradually warmer water, but not as warm as it would be in the Caribbean. Here's a shot showing the Saharan air really extending far out into the Atlantic now, all the way over to the Eastern Caribbean. There's the depression, though, kind of bumping into that, eroding it a little bit. This is another system we're going to have to watch as it moves off and tries to develop with time. We'll see. It's that time of year where things can start happening rather quickly, and in some cases, one after the other. The forecast models overall kind of leaning more to the left with time or to the west, as we say. Uh, you have right of track and left of track, things like that. So we typically talk about left or right. And I try to intermix it with west and north, etc. And you remember yesterday the track forecasts were a lot more like this. And now we're starting to see them lean, especially the European ensembles, which aren't shown here, unfortunately. Uh, that is a service you have to pay a lot of money for. And we don't have that kind of a budget here. But, you know, Weatherbell, Ryan Maui. Uh, you see that on Twitter, Joe Bastardi tweets that from time to time. And those ensemble members are showing much more of a westward track because it has a much weaker system, again steered by the more low-level flow instead of the deep layer ridge. Uh, and this is what it looks like at 168 hours. This is a week from today, just as an example. 5,000 foot level vorticity signature. There is the would-be storm. Would it be a storm then? We'll have to see. Uh, this right here is 60 degrees west longitude. So, you know, it went from kind of going like this uh, early and even farther east than that to making it all the way over to 60 west. We'll have to wait and see. You know, it's got a lot of hurdles to get through, and it's at a fairly high latitude in some of the model plots for it to be of concern to the U.S. But you never know until you know, right? That's what some people say. So we will certainly keep an eye on it. All right, well, that's it from me for today. Again, I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for your time and attention here. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.